If you've ever hiked in the mountains or walked in the hills, you may have noticed that the steepness of your climb depends on your direction of travel. Walking in one direction, your altitude increases rather quickly. While walking in another direction, your altitude barely increases at all. Moving in other directions, your altitude decreases. To describe this in terms of calculus, we use directional derivatives. We'll graph the function f of xy equals 10 minus 4x squared minus y squared to model the hill. The function value f of xy is the height of the hill in tens of feet at a point, xy, where the hill's peak is at 0, 0. A directional derivative is the slope of a tangent line at a point. Let's choose a point on the surface and label it by p. In the single variable case, there are only two directions to choose from, forward and backward along the x-axis. In the two variable case, we have infinite directions to choose from. As you will see, we specify the direction using a vector in x and y. Once we have chosen the direction, we consider a vertical plane that is parallel to the chosen direction and passes through the original point. The plane intersects the graph of the function in a curve. And the slope of the line tangent to this curve is the directional derivative. Observe as we rotate the compass to choose a direction, the vertical plane intersecting the surface rotates and generates a new curve of intersection. This in turn generates a new tangent line at the point P. The slope of these tangent lines at the point P is nothing but the directional derivative of the given function at the point P in the specified direction. As you might expect, two directions are particularly important the positive x direction and the positive y direction. When in the direction of the positive x axis, we call the directional derivative the partial derivative with respect to x. When in the direction of the positive y axis, we call the directional derivative the partial derivative with respect to y. Let's find the rate of change of our altitude if we move in the direction of the vector that points from the origin to the point, to 1. That is, if we move in a south by southeast direction. Here is the direction vector d that we need. Recall that a vector consists both of a direction and a magnitude. The magnitude of vector d is the square root of 5. In the computation of the directional derivative, we want the direction vector only to provide direction. We don't want the magnitude of vector d to distort our computation of the rate of change. So we use the vector of length 1, pointing in the direction of vector d. We are ready to define the directional derivative. We use a capital D to represent the directional derivative with a subscript vector u to emphasize that it depends on the unit vector. As with the ordinary derivative, a directional derivative is defined using a limit. First, we think of a second point obtained by moving out a little bit from the original point now in the direction of vector u. We use the function evaluated at this point and now can compute the slope of the line through the two points. Now we use the limit, imagining the second point moving closer to the original point as h goes to zero. Here the second point moves along the direction of vector u. We now apply the definition to this f and this direction vector u. The first step is shown. If you like, pause the video and try computing the limit yourself. Here is the result. Did you get the same thing? If we stand on the hill at the point, one half, one fourth, and start moving in the south by southeast direction, represented by vector u, the change in altitude is given by evaluating the directional derivative at one-half, one-fourth. This gives us about negative 3.8, meaning that our altitude decreases by 3.8 feet per horizontal foot in the direction of u. Let's try another direction. The vector that points from the origin to the point negative one, one, lies in a northeastern direction. 
We'll call this vector d. We find the unit vector that points in the direction of vector d. There is an alternative way to compute the directional derivative that bypasses the limit definition. If f of xy is differentiable in x and y, we can prove that the directional derivative follows this nice formula in terms of the partial derivatives. Remember that this only works if f is differentiable. We compute the partial derivatives of f. Recall that in order to find the partial derivative with respect to x, consider y constant and differentiate as usual. Likewise, in order to find the partial derivative with respect to y, consider x constant and differentiate as usual. Now, thanks to the theorem, we have an expression for the directional derivative in the direction of vector u without using the limit definition. If we stand on the hill at the point one-half, one-quarter, and start moving in the northeastern direction, represented by vector u, then the slope is about 2.47 vertical feet per horizontal foot. Walking northeast from this point, for every foot we move, we climb about 2.47 feet. A hiker wanting to climb this hill at a moderate incline compares this with other directional derivative values to find the desired rate of ascent, not too steep and not too shallow.